fishing in the margins is a deadly way of catching big weights of carp. We were coming into March, even though it's still, you know, it's not warm, still quite cold, the, the water still be cold and the water still quite clear, but there's still big bags of fish to be caught down the margins. <clears throat> now, a few things to bear in mind is obviously they're not going to come into like that much water, 12, 18 inch, like they do in the summer. And it's not going to be about big potting loads and loads of ground, but to get them in there. This time of the year now, you want to be on the back foot a little bit. Just use your head, look in the edge. You know, like I, I can see the bottom in close here. But I know if I fish a metre or so off the bank in that slightly deeper water where they've got a little bit of cover over their heads where you can't see the bottom, there's still some nice days to be, to be had catching big carp. Now, one thing to bear in mind this time of the year when targeting the margins is they're not going to come in there until late. You're looking from the 90 minutes to go until the end. Now, one good tip is look around the lake, see who's catching. If there's some fish being caught short or in the edge, the chances are with 90 minutes to go, you might be able to drop in and catch a few. But at the same time, if it's fishing really hard, you might not want to put that feed in that early. If there's only an odd fish getting caught and you're probably only going to have a chance of catching one or two real late ones in the edge, then I've left it before now until 40 minutes to go to feed it and then dropped in there with 20 minutes to go and managed to catch two or three great big ones, which is enough to get you over the line. So it's a case of just play it by ear, have a look around. If it's fishing well, 90 minutes to go, I'd be looking to put my feed in, go in and catch a few. But if I'm looking around and there's hardly anything being caught and I've only got a couple of fish myself and I'm thinking one or two fish is going to make the difference, I'll leave that until 40 minutes to go, half hour to go, then drop in and try and catch a few. So it's quite simple fishing. Let's look at the bait, let's look at some of the rigs and where in the peg I'm going to fish because that's probably the most important along with your timings, location and time of when you fish it. So bait wise, we're only going to be looking to fish in, I'm looking at the colour of the water now and I'd say I can see probably eight inches down just in the edge here then it sort of drops off. So we're going to be looking for two and a half, three foot of water. So what I've got, you know, same as what you would in summer, micros and ground bit are a brilliant way for attracting fish into your peg. So what I've got there, I've got some cell two mills, they smell lovely, and I've got some green supreme, straight out the bag, mixed, I haven't even put that through, I've mixed it like porridge, let it set and then just move it around in my hand at the bottom of the bucket, it's still quite lumpy but I don't mind that. So they are going to be our initial feed, I'll probably feed 70% micros and then 30% ground bit, that ground is a nice, just a little bit of extra attractant. So that's the feed, and then on the hook, I've got some nice six mil expanders on the old ever faithful sweet corn. So that's the bait, really simple. It's not about hammering loads of bait in, as you'll see in a bit. We'll put a little bit of bait in to start, and then it's going to be a case of fishing with like um, maybe a large guru like pole pot, feeding that after every fish, and then we'll play it by ear. If they're still not coming in, and we think we should be catching more perhaps we'll introduce maybe a hundred mil of bait, try and draw them in and then we can focus on working out how to catch them best. So let's have a quick look at the rig and then we can look at where we're going to fish. Right, so plumbing up boys, what I've done, I've plumbed up a, a really good area to target, like an empty peg so to speak. I've always find by fishing like a top kit length off the bank is always a deadly place to fish. You catch them real big ones there like that. So what I've done, I've plumbed up exactly there so I'm a top kit off the bank and what I've got is I've got just under three foot of depth there which is absolutely perfect. I've taken a bit of time to plumb it up because it is a little bit rocky in the edge here but I found like a nice little flat area of about that distance. These geese are kicking off again. They were a nuisance down here, these geese. Are. So what I've got, I've got some black hydro and a long kit because we're fishing for decent fish. And what I've opted for is a 0 0.4 wire bobby, nice and stable, so I can just sit over my little pile of bait, 017 mainline, and then I've just got like a little spread of shots, number nines they are, like a spread bulk, if you see them there, and then just below that, four inches below that, I've got a one number nine dropper, a four inch hook length of 015, and a 14's SLWG. I just fancy a bigger hook, you know, for a green of corn or a big expander, I just want to make sure they hold them on. So that's the rig. So it'll just be a case of putting my initial feed in. We're starting to get to that sort of time of the day now. If, if this was a match, this is the time I'd be looking to target the edge. We're getting on now, it's about just gone two o'clock. So now is the time to, you know, you don't want to feed it too early, 
now's the time to target it you know between two and three o'clock you know ten depending on what time you're fishing so it's it's the right time of day i'm going to put probably going to put in to start with because i know this venue they do like a little bit of bait what i'm going to put in to start Right, so the initial feed is going to be three parts micros. So I've got a little 100 mil cup on cupping kit there, so I'll just use that for now. So I'll put three lots of 100 micros in to three. And what I'm going to do, 100 mil of ground bit, just for that attraction. The ground bit is so good for pulling them in. And when I've got them in there, I can always take the ground bit out if I need to. But just that little bit of a cloud won't do any harm at all so it's going to be a case of because we're targeting good fish i'm going to put 100 mil in the start to kick our peg off that's the initial feed and then we're just going to fish a target bait over the top be it a big expander a green of corn Like I said earlier, it's not about filling it in like it is in the summertime. You know, we are fishing for literally a handful of fish late on in the session now. You know, if we catch six fish down the edge, that'll be a mega result. But some days you're only fishing for two, but those two are the difference between winning and coming nowhere. So I'm just going to line up on my far bank mark. I've got a nice bit of dark water where there's a tree in line with me there. I'm just going to turn my pot over, sink it, plop it in. There you are. So if this was a match now, I'd probably be looking to give that 10 or 12 minutes just to settle, let any fish come in there. I'll go in without any feed to start with, just, you know, just my hook bit over the top of that little bit of feed. If there's no response, then I'll look to put a pool pot on then and start feeding a little bit of bait. But for now, I'm just going to leave that settle 10 or 15 minutes and then we can drop in and have a look over it. So when it comes to pool pots, I've got two I normally use. You, what you've got to do, you've got to think about where you're fishing, like this is a big open water lake so you need to feed some bait to get some fish in. If you were a tunnel in places like that, everything's the same where you fish, off the bank, but your feeding will be, you know, sort of cut back. So instead of using a large guru at somewhere like tunnel, you're using a medium or a small, you know, just bear in mind the size of the lake will dictate a lot of the time how much to feed. So for this session today we're targeting big carp on, on you know, a big expanse of water. I've got a large guru there, but what I've got as well is a, a large guru just cut down. So that just allows me. So what I've got there, a large guru just cut down. So he's nice and fat, but I can put plenty of bait in him. So that's the two pots. So I'll just vary between them. If I feel like I'm feeding too much bait with that one, I can always cut back to the half pot. So that's the two pots nice and simple so it's been about 12 minutes since we fed that so what I'm going to do I'm going to drop in first without the cap on just see what kind of response we have because if there's a carp coming to that you should still be there I'm going to start just on a green of corn a nice big green right. there he is so that's going to be the starting point So what I'll do is, I'm shipping right to the end of the section so I know I'm the exact same distance, right on the joint of my elbow there, and then I'll just bring that in, and then just lay it in over that little mound. Now this is, I recently fished a match at White Springs, and very similar, like I caught nothing all day, literally, I, think, I don't think I caught a carp for three and a half hours. I fed some bait positive, just off the bank, in front of the next pallet, and I managed to catch in the last sort of 65, 70 minutes, I managed to catch six great big ones to get me from absolutely nowhere to back up towards the framing places. So that's the beauty of this method. Even late on in the match and you think you're completely out of it, 
one good hour down this edge here where you're only fishing for five or six big ends and get you right back in the mix again. You know, I'm not looking to catch a hundred pound on you. Like I said, it's literally looking to catch four, five or six good carp just to finish the session. But like I said earlier on, location and timing is everything with this method. Don't be coming in the bank fishing in 18 inches where you can see the bottom because a, a carp might come in there, but it's never going to stay in there. It's not going to settle for you. But just fishing out from the bank a little bit, just give them a little bit of cover over their heads. Right, so I'm just looking at the time now. And this is the time they should start coming in closer to the banks. This would be a kind of last hour of the match now. We're not looking for many opportunities, so when I do everything, I want to make sure it's done right. It's like when I'm feeding my bait, I'm right, right bang in line with my marker. When I'm putting the rig in, just trying to hold it over that little pile. If you're not going to get many chances, you don't want to fluff any of them. So it's just a, a case now. We're holding on to that rig, making sure it's right over my little pile of bait. And being patient and striking at the right indications. When you get a bite on this, it should be as clean as a whistle, like a real quick, fast bite. Anything that's pulled down slow, goes off like that, just leave them. If you have to, <coughs> and a fish has moved your sort of rig off your little pile, all you want to do is just like lift your rig out a foot or so, let it all straighten up and just drop it straight back in over that little mound of bait. Lovely, just a clean jab under, and that was actually after I lifted and dropped it, just back in, in position again. So that's a real nice start. Knew there was winning there from those little indications we had. So I've got the black hydro on there, no nice balanced gear. You'll get it under control. If you've only got an hour to go, I don't want to be messing around down the edge with like white hydro and light plastic, looking good. I just want to clonk them and get them in. You might only you might, might only have a chance of like four or five fish like last half hour job so you want to make the most of when they turn up you want to make the most of it of it and get them in so a nice big hook a nice strong balanced line and that black hydro just does a job on them oh, nice fish. And these are the fish you catch down the edge late on These are the kind of fish that will get you from zero to hero, especially this time of year when the weights aren't massive. He's just wrapped himself on the line there. Some hooks come up to the net. Look. So to show him, hold him up and show him to you. So that is bread and butter, in my opinion, for down the edge. Look at that. Six or seven pound. And I think when you get your first one, chances are you're going to catch a couple more. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop that large guru pot on. I'm going to fill him full of micros. So he's like full like that. Just thumb him down. And then on top, just a little bit of loose ground bit. Just to get a little cloud and a little bit more attraction. I feel like... I need to be attracting more fish because I've been in there for quite a while. You know, we're talking 12 minutes. We've waited for that one. And we get into the time now, you know, I want to be catching them a little bit quicker than that. If you're gonna if you're gonna have five or six at the depth of the session, I wanna be catching them quicker really. So back in with a nice big green of corn again. Not feeding any corn at the minute, I just want a nice target hook bait. So when one swims in, he sees that green of corn and just nails it. So now we've had that fish. What I don't want to do is make a mess of a chance of another one, so I lay my rig out into the lake and then just feed just in line with my marker to get them micros out. Just make sure I get everything bang on because we're not going to get loads of chances here. I push those micros in a little touch too hard then, so just bear that in mind as well. 
that's a bit of a schoolboy error just squeezing them in too hard and then having to bang my pole to get them out so i'm just holding my rig now right over that feed letting it straighten out and then just dropping it in and i'm hoping now that we've caught our first one you know the time is getting on a bit but this you know this is match conditions if you like this is what's going to happen i've got like 45 minutes now where and i'd like to you know catch another and another four of them definitely another four of them good ones but it's a good sign that they're coming in because we had a little indication and we've caught that one another little indication our float just pulled down then but this is definitely the time where they're going to start coming in looking for a bit of bait i've noticed it recently on silverfish matches like hooking carp short that's just a sign where they, you know they're starting to get hungry now they're looking for a bit of food it's been a long old winter but hopefully we can start looking forward to a nice bit of carp fishing over the next couple of months a little dink uh, well not a dink but just a slow pull i'm not gonna strike that what i'm gonna do is lift my rig a float length out reposition it on my little pile i know i say it a lot in these videos but just trying to do everything all these little bits right that's what makes the difference come the end so there's, a, there's a definitely a fish in there at the minute so i'm just going to sit tight here now wait for a lovely clean under again think and I shouldn't have struck at that. Just couldn't resist that then. Just lead straight back in. Oh, that absolutely that made me jump it went under so quick huh? and it's not doing a lot so that could be a good one. Oh yeah he's not happy but it's tough because he's made the mistake and it's common isn't it? Smaller than the last one, but still a nice fish. Oh, yeah, it's a good fish. Didn't give him credit that one. Whoa, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Looks like he's lifting into the net. That's not what we want. So, what I'm going to do is going to be a case of straight back in exactly the same with that pot because it was quite a quick bite and I feel like there's an odd fish there. And I don't need to feed loads of bait to try to track another one in. I'm just going to put another back shot on there. But before I do, I'm going to feed the peg and set it up ready for the next fish. So same again. I think that little puff of ground bit is, is a nice little attractant. Another number eight on there. There's a back shot. Because I can just feel that little bit of surface skin moving my rig about a little bit too much and that's definitely not what I want not when you're fishing for big carp in the edge I don't want to be foul looking anything and wasting any time and then right out right to the end of the section lift my rig clear of the water so I don't drag it into any carp that are there and then just drop it in over that little a bit. Right, so because we missed that bite and I haven't had another sign since for a couple of minutes, I'm going to refeed with my big pot. I'm going to put an expander on this time.
So if you feel like a like there now, I know a fish has been in there and I haven't caught it and I've sat there for a while and not had a bite. I feel like I need to reset that trap again. So just turn my pot over nice and tidy. Go on, it's out. No bang in the pole this time. And then just back in with our rig. Like I don't want to be sitting there with no bait in the peg, like if a carp has come in and cleared me out. Obviously there's no attraction for any other fish to come in there. So I'm going to feed with this pot this time. If I don't catch one, I feel like I want to give him another 100 mil of bait to pull a few in because I had those two fish, you know, not quickly after that initial feed, but I had two close together off that big pot really. So it might be a case of a big pot and sitting it out and, you know, catching them that way rather than a little bit of bait going in all the time. There you are. There's a bite straight away, look, with an expander on the hook that time. Refeed, dropped in there, going straight away. So obviously you need to keep that bait going in. So as that bite was so quick, I won't put that big big pot in quite yet, that hundred mil. I'll have another go with this. Shut through a bramble then. Eh? Like one thing to bear in mind as well is your like roller positioning. I haven't got my rollers directly behind me, I've got them off for an angle. I don't want to have to hook a carp and drag him right round in front. It's all about, you know, I'm trying to be as efficient as I can. Because like I said, you know, we haven't got much time left. And this is a good fish, this is, look. But this is what it's all about. Oh, okay. That's an absolute dandy. That's a leather, is it? I don't think I've ever put a leather before, but it is a leather. If I was a carp angler, no, I'd call that a head of the leather. Oh, it is, eyes it's not a single scale on that. He is, as they say, scaleless. That's lovely, that, isn't he? I don't think I've ever caught a carp looks like that before. So, so that's three now. In probably... Mm, 18 to 20 minutes. But what I want to do is my float is just sitting a little touch too low for my light gains down that edge. You know, I don't want it sticking out like a lighthouse, but I, you know, I want a bit of show on it just to make sure I'm striking at the, you know, the correct bites. So I'll just grease him up a touch. And I'm going to go back in with a big expander again. Because that was a pretty instant bite after that. Again. Three quarter fill my pot of micros and then my little puffer ground bait on the top. I don't think that ground bait does it any harm at all. So again, with my marker, make sure my rig is out into the lake so it's not going to get snagged up on a carp. That feeding is just nice now. So I'm right over my little pile there. You see that black hydro, how quick you know you're getting these fish in. Bear in mind we're fishing 30 meters. They just hook them and you know they're not tearing me off into the middle of the lake like they would with a light with a light elastic. I'm not chasing them everywhere, they're you know whacking them, I got them under control and they're in the pan within less than a minute probably which is what you want when you've only got you know a short amount of time to put a good weight together so i've been sat there now since that last fish for probably eight minutes or so and not had a sign even though we fed some bait and like i can't really afford to go that long this late in the session without a fish i just feel like i need to pull some fish into my peg and then at least if you've got them there you can work out how to catch them so what i'm going to do i'm going to give them 100 mil of just ground bait I just think that's the, going to be the best way to attract some fish in and at least if I've got some fish in my peg then I can you know use my little cup with a little bit of feed just to you know centralize them get them right up my hook bit so that's gone in nice there so 
I'm gonna look at my watch, I'm gonna give that literally like three minutes, just to settle a second, and then I'm gonna drop it back in over it. You know, we've got probably like 25 minutes of the session now, if it was a match left, and I feel like I wanna catch another three, at least another three. We've had three, if we get six or seven, I think that'll be a nice result. I've let that settle now for a couple of minutes. And I'm just gonna go back in with a grain of corn this time, just because We've had more bites on corn than while we have that big pellet. Even though the one we had in the pellet was quick. You know, we've had two carp and missed an odd bite on that corn, so... Let's see if that ground bit has just pulled a carp into the peg. I feel like we need a bit more attraction, we need to get him in. And when we can get him in, we can work out how, how to catch him. But you ain't going to catch him if they're not there, so... Oh, that was as clean as they come. That 100 milligram has definitely done it. Some, like I said earlier on, sometimes you just need to get them in your peg. You know, it's all well and good, you know, tapping a little bit of bait in there, but if they're not coming into it, you've got to change things. And this boy hasn't got much interest in fighting at all. fish though, you know, another six, seven pound. You just forgot how to fight, I think, this one. I reckon we pan him pretty quick. And there we go. Oh yeah, another nice fish. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give him another, I'm not gonna give him a hundred mil, I'm probably gonna give him like, 50 mil, which is probably four large guru pots. No, three large guru pots. I just don't think that pot is enough. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give them, I'm going to put some micros in and some ground bait. Give it a shake up. So sort of that's going to be my feed now. Just going to up it again. But that was a quick response, that was, you know, two minutes. So again, obviously they want a bit of bait. The bite was absolutely money, fairly. And I'm not going to mess around, I'm going to drop, take that pot off. And I'm going to drop straight back in over that. I'm gonna go for a grain of corn again. That seems to be the better hook bait, just a, like a nice visual standout bait over that. Might throw some ground bait. And they are definitely the bites you're after, just absolutely zoomed under. They, they go under so quick they give you a fright. That's the bites you want. Because if you've only got a little bit of time of your session left, you don't want to be chasing a foul hook around your peg everywhere for it just to pop off at the net and cost you five minutes. And you've got the right deer on. It was another one straight away. Obviously, they want that bit of bait. So what I'll do now is just exactly the same again. Even though we've hooked this quite quick, I'm just going to give them another sort of 50 mil. fighting a bit harder than like the last one. But it just goes to show, you know, don't get stuck in the sort of routine of whatever, you know, what everybody else tells you, oh, you've got to fish with a pot, you've got to do it like this, you've got to do it like that. You've just got to change it as you go. Like we've changed two or three different times in this, you know, we've only been fishing hour and a half, we've changed the feed in two or three times already. That's a good fish that is. So don't, you know, don't fish out of a textbook, you know, use your own 
you know, your sort of own gut instinct of what to do. Oh yeah, that's a lovely fish, it's a big boy. But these are over after down the edge, like the ones, we've had one little bit smaller, but you know, the others have all been sort of five to seven pound. They're the fish that are going to get you from nowhere up into the mix. Oh, that's a big head shake. Come on in, boys, have a look at you. Yes, sir. Oh, that is. Absolute bite, as clean as a whistle. Flew under. Oh, yeah, look at that. That is what we're after. That is what the doctor ordered. Oh yeah, that's a sow. Look at that net, boy. Well, they are what we'd have to down the edge. Look at that. Oh, the tail on him, man. Of course, got a hell of a tail. So, another 50 mil. We're getting to the last sort of 10 minutes now, so I want to make sure we get the most out of the peg. Again. So again, just take my time, make sure everything's right. I reckon if you can get two more this last ten minutes, that'll be a right result. What's nice about feeding like that, rather than using your cup, is like I fed that now, that's getting like a minute or two minutes just to settle. And what you'll find is a lot of the time you can just drop drop in now and it'll just go immediately because the bait's all settled, the fish, there's no rig in the water, the fish are there. That can be better than fishing with a pot a lot of the time. You know, with a pole mounted pot, so let's just see. That's what happened last drop. Let's have a look again. Let's just see if we can get one. Well, there's a good one to finish on. Last knockings we managed to begin. Like another good fish, seven pound plus, I expect. Hooked absolutely perfectly. So there's the proof of the pudding, look. They're the kinds of fish you can catch down the edge, just to start to warm up a bit. It's a lovely carp, that is. I hope a few things in this video will help you out with your own margin fishing. Just a few things to remember. Timing is the biggest one, I think. Making sure you're fishing in the right part of your peg at the right time of day. Obviously, they're not going to be in there early doors. It's going to be late, last knockings, like today, last hour of the session. I think that's the sixth good carp we've had now, the last hour. And the other thing is where you're fishing. Don't fish right in tight here. You know, I can see all the stones on the bottom. Fish that top kit off the bank in around two and a half to three foot, and you won't go far wrong. And then just mix your feeding up, we fed with micros and ground bait. We've used our little pot and we've used our bigger pot. So it's just a case of feeling your way in. You'll sort of get a feel for how they need to, you know, how you need to feed them to catch them. So there should be plenty in there to help you get out, inspire you to go out and do some springtime margin carp fishing. So I might stay on for another half an hour because there's a few in my peg now. But I'll see you on the next one. I hope you enjoyed that.